Ephesians chapter 4 The church increases as members edify each other 4 colon 1 16 Walk worthy of our vocation, in unity edifying other members. 4 colon 17 24 Put off the old man, and put on the new man. 4 colon 25 32 Practical examples of putting away the old and putting on the new. 4 colon 1 I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. Paul says, I therefore, we always ask why is the therefore there? Because of all that the Father and Son have done for us Gentiles, choosing the body of Christ, not the individual believer, before the foundation of the world to serve him in the heavenly places, having redeemed us through the Son's blood, making us accepted in the Beloved, sealing us with that Holy Spirit of promise quickening us spiritually together with Christ. Rescuing us from the power of the prince of the power of the air and raising us up to sit together in the heavenly places in Christ after saving us by grace. In Ephesians, Paul writes to the body of Christ as a whole. Paul has described our salvation, God's dispensational shift from time past to the but now when he is giving the Gentiles, all people, another chance to have eternal life. Christ's love and Christ's power both work in us. Our wise Father has an eternal purpose that in the dispensation of the fullness of time to gather together into one kingdom the two realms in heaven and earth, Peter's and Paul's groups. Therefore, Paul, being a prisoner of the Lord, not of Satan, ISA. 42 7, beseeches or implores us, he does not command us, because God never forces anyone to believe him, read his word, or to serve him. Grace would not be grace if it could not be abused. God doesn't want anything from us except that we believe what his son has already done, 1 Cor. 15 colon 3, 4. But we are saved to serve, a servant is not happy unless they are serving, this gives all believers young and old, male or female purpose in life. All of Ephesians is about the body of Christ so our vocation is to be Christian members of the body of Christ. We have a part in the family of God, 3 15. How can we walk or live worthy in a way that honors God who we represent? By believing the right doctrine or instruction Christ gave to the one body of Christ through our one apostle Paul. Right doctrine or teaching results in right conduct or behavior. We are Christians first of all who have a job to support ourselves and our families. Being a wife and mother are also very important jobs, but we must not neglect our vocation as Christians. We are to help others to trust in Christ, 1 12, 13, and to make all men see the fellowship of the mystery that was hidden God from the beginning of the world, 3 9. We walk worthy of our vocation for which we were called. We are to live on a higher plane, above sin and self, serving God. Our vocation is to be our occupation, something that occupies our thoughts and time. Our vocation is to be useful members of Christ ambassadors now as responsible adult sons and we will have a future job position in the heavenly places. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. 2.10 We can do these jobs for God because we have his spirit, his power, his mind, which is his word, and his love in us. We will have jobs in heaven, but we can start serving him now. His Holy Spirit can use his word to work in us when we understand his word rightly divided. When we rightly divide we become useful sons and daughters of God because we know what he is doing and can join in the family business. What is God's will today? Who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth? 1 Tim 2 colon 4 the opportunity to become a body of Christ member will soon be over at the rapture. After the rapture, no one else on earth will be able to be join the body of Christ and live in the heavenly places. This is why we are trying to help as many people as we can, as fast as we can to be saved and equipped to serve God. The book God's Secret can speed up your understanding of the Bible and the big picture of what God is doing, and so can the other books and Bible commentaries. In Nehemiah 8 verse 8, there is an example of comments on the word of God. So they read in the book in the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. All our books can also help someone to understand God's word to us through Paul and the mystery. We can do things the slow way or the fast way. This heaven and earth are going to burn up, but God will make new heavens and a new earth for us to live in. Peter tells the people of Israel, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt. 
with fervent heat. Nevertheless we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. 2 Peter 3 verses 11 to 13. When we go to heaven the only thing we can take with us is his spirit and the sound doctrine that we have stored up in our inner man. Let's take as many people with us as possible. This is why we do these videos and books. It is our way of serving God and our brothers and sisters in Christ. There are so many ways to serve the Lord, and everyone can do something. Even sharing the videos and books help. Paul says again that he is a prisoner of the Lord, not Nero, 3 colon 1. God only speaks to us through his word, Christ is speaking to us through Paul. Paul begs us to walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. Members were called or saved by the gospel, 2 Thess. 2.14, to serve God and one another. 2. With all lowliness and meekness, with long-suffering, forbearing one another in love, how do we serve God now and in eternity? With all lowliness, we recognize that we don't deserve this grace, and meekness, mild-mannered obedience, willing to suffer long for the benefit of others, putting up with one another, out of love for each other. 3. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace purposing or making an effort to maintain the unity that already exists because each believer has his spirit in them, consequently we share a bond of peace. The church is one body, and we should not have any denominations based on the traditions of men. Denominations lead to division, schism, in the church. We all have the spirit of his son and we should all be in the same loyal subjection to our Father in heaven as his son. For there is one body, and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, five one Lord, one faith, one baptism, six one God and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. Paul lists the sevenfold unity of the spirit to be kept. One, one body of Christ, not many man-made denominations. 2. One spirit of promise, his righteousness, his life, 113, Rom, 517, Gal, 4, 6, 3. One hope of your calling to be caught up, 1 Thess, 4, 17, 4. One Lord Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, Rom, 1625, 5. One faith, the faith Christ gave to Paul recorded in Romans to Philemon. 6. One baptism by one spirit are we all spiritually baptized into one body. 7. One God and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. 1 is the number for the body of Christ, while 12 is the number for Israel. There is one body, one spirit, one hope of your calling, Titus 2 verse 13, one Lord, one faith, Paul's sound doctrine, one baptism, a spiritual baptism, one core. 12, 13, one God and Father of all. The Holy Father is above all, and through all, and in you all. God is transcendent, existing apart from and not subject to the limitations of the material universe. He is pervading and sustaining the universe, and best of all God the Father is in every member of the body of Christ. We can clearly see how the doctrine in Ephesians brings us to a broader, deeper, wider, and higher understanding of the Father, His will, His majesty, His manifold wisdom, His power, His work, His exalted position, and His presence in us. What is it that unifies us? It is also having His Spirit and following our one God-appointed Apostle Paul, Rom. 11.13, and Christ's instruction to us through him. Paul said, Ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you, Rom. 6.17, Paul told the Corinthians, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment, one core. 1.10, 7 But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. To every one of us is given a job by grace, according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Rom. 5.17 We all received 100% the gift of His Spirit upon salvation to serve God, but we are not equally mature in the Word of God. The mature can help the others. We are individually responsible to use His Spirit in us to the fullest. The more of the Bible we understand and believe the more we have the mind of Christ and the more useful we are. His word rightly divided is the whole armor of God. Paul told the Romans that the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly, Rom. 
1620, when Paul has written down the mystery, as he is doing in Ephesians, then the last installment will be added to the Bible and it will be complete, Colossians 1 verse 25, and we use the rightly divided word of truth against Satan's lies, 2 Tim. 2.15, just as Christ did in the wilderness when tempted by Satan, Matt. 4. And Luke 4, God showed everyone unmerited favor by giving us Christ's spirit to dwell in our hearts, 316, 17, as we believe his word, 317. The Lord Jesus Christ used the word of God against Satan and so should we, 617, we fight Satan's lies with God's truth. His spirit in us using his word rightly divided is sufficient to meet all our needs. The way we get doctrine into our inner man is by studying and understanding God's word with our minds and then believing it in our hearts so the truth gets into our souls, 1 Thess. 2.13 Then we increase the power of Christ in us. The power to think like Christ with his strength and might, 3.16, 2 Cor. 12 colon 9, Phil. 4.13 Christ's spirit in us is one thing that every member of the body of Christ has in common. Each person's soul is unique. The soul is who we really are. Everyone is different. To have Christ's spirit in us is a gift. Members of the body of Christ are more capable of contributing to the edification of the body when they understand his word rightly divided. 8 Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Paul quotes, Thou hast ascended on high, thou hast led captivity captive, thou hast received gifts for men, Psalm 68 18a, b, and applies it to the body of Christ. This phrase is also found in Judges 5 verse 12. Jesus Christ triumphed over the captors, Satan and his fallen angels, on the cross and led them away from the believers by giving the believers his spirit, his righteousness, and his life. When did Christ ascend on high? Christ ascended up on high when the Father raised him from the dead, 120, on the day of his resurrection. Christ ascended on the first day of the week, Sunday. Our Lord Jesus first ascended on high after telling Mary Magdalene not to touch him, John 20 verse 17. On the first day of the week, John 20 verses 1 and 17, the Son resurrected and ascended to the Father. The Lord returned quickly and allowed the other women to touch his feet, Matt. 28 colon 9, weeks later he said, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth, Matt. 28 colon 18, so the Lord Jesus had received that power. He ascended 40 days later from the Mount of Olives, Acts 1 verses 9 to 12, to sit on the right hand of the Father. But he ascended far above all principality, 121, after saving Saul in Acts 9. What does he led captivity captive mean? Paul let us know that the captors, Satan and his angels, were led captive. Satan had deceived the Gentile captives at the Tower of Babel and then Israel became his lawful captives when they made the golden calf at Sinai breaking their covenant with God. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty, or the lawful captive delivered? But thus saith the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered, for I will contend with him that contendeth with thee, and I will save thy children. And I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh, and they shall be drunken with their own blood, as with sweet wine, and all flesh shall know that I the Lord am thy Savior and thy Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob, ISA. 49.24-26 In the Song of Deborah and Barak, that with the help of the Lord, Barak and the Israelites and Jael triumphed over those who had held Israel captive, that is Sisera the captain of Jabin king of Canaan and his Philistine forces, Jad. 4.27 5, 12, 23 to 26. Sisera is a type of Satan, his head was crushed, Genesis 3 verse 15. Jael pounded a tent peg into his temple of his head while he slept, nailing him to the ground. Christ triumphed on the cross and then spoiled or plundered Satan and his angels and led these captors, captive. Christ took the prey out of Satan's mouth and rescued his people, 1 Sam. 17 colon 32 dash 37 and having spoiled principalities and powers satan and his forces he christ made a shoe of them openly triumphing over them in it the cross satan was bound at the cross no man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he will first bind the strong man and then he will spoil his house mark 3 verse 27 jesus christ has won the war against satan because when believers have the spirit of jesus then they belong to christ not satan 
but all things have not yet been restored to their rightful place. When did Jesus give gifts unto men? The Bible is so accurate it uses the past tense because Christ was raised, ascended, and then he gave spiritual gifts to men. After Christ bound Satan on the cross, the Father sent down the Holy Ghost on Pentecost and gave gifts to Peter and the other 120 men and women with him, tongues, healing, and other signs and wonders that Christ had done while on earth. The Holy Spirit helped Peter's group, then he helped Paul's group. These gifts continued when the body of Christ was a child but ended in Acts 28 when Paul had received the entire revelation of the mystery that he is now writing down. The, the transition ministry was complete and the word was out that God was now saving a group to live in heaven. When Paul was saved he had similar sign gifts by the Holy Spirit and so did others in the body of Christ members, especially the Corinthians who were next door to a synagogue, for the Jews require a sign, one core. 122, but once the transition from Christ's ministry through Peter for the earthly believers to Christ's ministry through Paul for heavenly believers was complete the sign gifts ended in Acts 28 verse 28. By then it was preached to every creature which is under heaven, Colossians 1 verse 23, that God had now begun saving people to live in heaven, not into the kingdom on earth. The sign gifts ended as Paul had said they would, 1 Cor. 13,8-13. By grace we have the sufficient Spirit of Jesus Christ in us to help us understand the completed Word of God. 9. Now that He ascended, what is it but that He also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? 10. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that He might fill all things. Just as in 120 in this verse, Paul lumps Christ's ascension on the first day of the week with His ascension 40 days later. Paul's emphasis is how His ascension will apply to ours. Note that these two verses are in parenthesis. Before Christ met Mary Magdalene, he had first ascended to the heart of the earth, Matt. 1240, also called Paradise, Luke 23 verse 43, and took the saved in the compartment known as Abraham's bosom, Luke 16 verse 22, to heaven, 2 Cor. 12 4, Heb. 1223, because he had redeemed them with his blood and given them his righteousness. On the cross, Jesus told the thief, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise, Luke 23 verse 43. The souls of those who were in Abraham's bosom are in heaven. But ye are come unto Mount Shaun, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling, that speaketh better things than that of Abel, Heb. 12,22-24. Paul also told us paradise was now in heaven, 2 Cor. 12,4. After the cross, the Father could impute his son's righteousness to Abraham and the others who were in paradise, Rom. 3,25. One year after the cross, Paul revealed that Christ also redeemed the body of Christ believers. He died for our sins, 1 Cor. 15,3. In mystery, also. Believers are no longer in bondage to Satan. When we were released from the prince of the power of the air at salvation, believers received the gift of the spirit of his son into your hearts, 2 colon 2, Gal, 4 colon 6. In the future, when the kingdom of heaven comes to earth, Deuteronomy 1121, paradise will be with the kingdom on earth believers, Revelation 2 verse 7. On the cross, Christ reclaimed heaven and earth. Christ ascended far above heaven that he might fill all things. His spirit will be in each believer in heaven and earth so this way he will fill each servant in every level of government in both realms. His purpose is to fill all things in heaven and on earth, but he has not yet taken possession of them. The Lord Jesus Christ will use Israel to reclaim the earth and the body of Christ to reclaim and subdue heaven. The restitution of heaven and earth is at his second coming, but the new heaven and earth are renovated after the GWTJ. God is preparing us here for reigning with him there. 11 And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. He gave 12 apostles to Israel before he ascended in Matt. 10 colon 2 4 Then he gave Paul's group gifted people after he ascended. Paul lists five offices. In the dispensation of grace, when the church was in its infancy, by his spirit Christ empowered some specially gifted apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. These men supernaturally spoke the word of God given to Paul before it was written down by Paul. 
We still have the office of evangelists, pastors, and teachers, but no one is supernaturally gifted because the sign gifts ended, 1 Cor. 13,8-13 No one is called to be a pastor they desire to be 1, 1 Tim. 3,1 And must study the Bible. Paul still wrote by inspiration until he finished 2 Timothy. Although the special gifts are gone, the offices still remain and can be filled by spirit-filled Pauline believers who study the pure, complete word of God rightly divided. We have something better. We have Christ's spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith so we can be rooted and grounded in love. 3, 16, 17. Every believer has the spirit of Christ in them, his complete word, and the grace we need to function in our daily walk. We do not need spiritual gifts today because we can all study his entire word rightly divided to show ourselves approved unto God with help of his Holy Spirit in us, 2 Tim. 2.15, we know that all scripture is profitable, 2 Tim. 3.16, we have the complete word of God in a Bible we can trust, the King James Bible. When we read this Bible rightly divided, studying by comparing verses we have the mind of Christ, 1 Cor. 2.13-16, his word reprograms our minds to think like him. Then his spirit quickens our mortal bodies to serve him. Rom 8.11.12 For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. 13 Till we all come in the unity of the faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. There is a sanctification process which is going on the edification of the entire body of Christ. The purpose for which the gifts still continues today. The purpose of the gifts are, 1. The perfecting of the saints, 2. The work of the ministry, 3. And the edifying of the body of Christ. Till or until we all, every member, as a unit come to the unity of the faith, Paul's sound doctrine, and the knowledge of the Son of God, John 17 verse 3, Phil. 3 colon 8 dash 10, Paul just clearly stated that the Lord Jesus Christ is the Son of God, Rom. 1 colon 4, 2 core, 1 19, gal, 2 20, when we all understand Christ and his word perfectly and are able to think like him. Paul told Titus, holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers, Titus 1 verse 9. When we all know Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, Rom. 1625, the body of Christ is still in the process of growing. None of us have perfect understanding of the entire Bible. Once we understand Romans to Philemon, understanding the rest of the Bible becomes much easier. Consider what I say, and the Lord give the understanding in all things, 2 Tim. 2 colon 7, when we all have matured in our understanding and become a perfect man, then we will all have reached unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. God wants all of us in the body of Christ to have the fullness of Christ, a full understanding of the sound doctrine he gave to us through Paul and the rest of the Bible. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works, 2 Tim 3, 16, 17. The Bible is so rich and Christ is so perfect that this may take all eternity. 14, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men, and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie and wait to deceive, when everyone in the body of Christ has come to this knowledge the truth, the sound doctrine of wholesome words, 1 Tim. 6 colon 3, then we will no longer be tossed to and fro, and Satan will not be able to deceive anyone with false doctrine. Henceforth, from now on, no one will be like children who are easily influenced to believe just anyone's teachings. Slight of men is sly tricks of logic or slick arguments. Cunning skillful craftiness with the intent to deceive with false doctrine, lies, or a doctrine that does not apply to us now. 15 But speaking the truth in love, may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. 16 From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, mocketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Speaking the truth in love is lovingly communicating the sound doctrine, the wholesome words. It is loving to share the truth of the word of God rightly divided with others. 
Getting the sound doctrine in us all is a process that involves teaching, learning, unlearning, and believing which results in spiritual growth of every member in the body of Christ, therefore the whole body grows collectively. We grow and expand like a child to an adult or like a dough ball, but in this illustration the yeast is good, Paul's sound doctrine. Paul indicates that God doesn't want any body of Christ member left behind. We are to speak the truth in love, Paul's sound doctrine, so the entire body of Christ can grow up into Christ, our head, in all things. When we are saved our position in Christ is perfect, but we must grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, and learn what God said about us and others. We are to be like our head, the Lord Jesus Christ. His word can transform us into the image of him, Rom. 829, 2 Gal. 419, but we all, with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord, 2 Cor. 318, Christ paid the price so we may obtain a prize. He made us one with the Son so we could be joint heirs with Him, Rom. 817, Paul uses the illustration of the human body. The head is the command center of the body. From Christ, our head, the whole body, both men and women, works together with each body part perfectly joined, united, and compacted together by that which every joint supplies or contributes according to the effectual working of what every part supplies as the entire body increases unto the edifying or building up of itself in love. The entire body of Christ increases as we are edified by one another in love. We learn from each other and by teaching each other. Every member has a role. We all have the same spirit. His love for us compels us to want to serve Him, 2 Cor 5.14, and His love in us compels us to want to serve each other. Love for Christ and the Godhead and each other is the motivating force. Ephesians focuses on the body of Christ, while in Colossians the focus is on the head. The body of Christ is an intimately connected growing organism that increases as every one of us individually and collectively understand God more through his word rightly divided, the head, from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knit together, increaseth with the increase of God, Colossians 2 verse 19. Christ rules the body of Christ just like our head rules our body. The head is the command center that controls, coordinates, and runs the rest of the body. Without the head the body cannot function. 17 This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk, not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind. 18 Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, Paul tells them what they should not do henceforth from now on because it is a waste of the gift of Christ in them. We are not to live useless lives like the lost Gentiles who are still Satan's captives, f. 2 colon 2, who walk in the vanity, emptiness, useless, worthless, of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being separated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in their fallen, ignorant, blind hearts. They are blind to what Christ has done for them. Paul doesn't want our hearts to be blinded to the truth Christ is sharing though him. 19 who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. Many Gentiles are past feeling, hardened, and full of lust and greed, continually refusing to trust Christ as their savior and declining to read and believe the truth of God's word. They are reprobate meaning without his Holy Spirit in them. They are spiritually unregenerated. They have given themselves over to deliberately rebellious lusts, to work all uncleanness with greediness. These indulgences are temporary because eternal torment awaits them. 20 But ye have not so learned Christ. 21 If so be that ye have heard him, and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus. In contrast, we have not learned Christ this way. If you have heard Christ and been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. If so be that ye have heard him, and have been taught by him, as the truth is in his word. If you know who Christ is, what he has done, and what he is doing. Now, building the body of Christ. We have heard Christ through Paul, 2 Cor. 13 colon 3. If any man think himself to be a prophet, or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. But if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant, 1 Cor. 1437, 38. 22 that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, 
now that we have his spirit us, 3 16, 17, we are to put off our former manner of life, the old sin nature, the flesh, or who we were in Adam when we were Satan's captives before we were saved, Rom. 5 12, the old man is corrupt according to deceitful lusts and profitable desires. Our old man was crucified together with Christ, Rom. 6 2 4, and we were quickened spiritually with Christ at salvation. We have received his spirit and are spiritually alive. We should not try to reform the sinful flesh. Paul said, have no confidence in the flesh, Phil. 3 colon 3, there is only one remedy for our sinful flesh and that is crucifixion. The only answer to sin is death and the only answer to death is life. Our flesh was crucified but it is still present in every cell of our body and tries to revive. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin, Rom. 6 6, we should know, reckon, and yield, know that we are dead to sin, our sinful flesh was crucified with Christ, count on it, or reckon, that what God said is true, and yield to that truth. A dead man can't sin any longer. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord, Rom. 6.11 Sorry sinful flesh, nice try, but you're dead. 23 And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. We read the Bible with his spirit in us and renew our minds with his words of truth. Our spirit is in our mind. When we are saved our spirit joins with his spirit. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit, one core. 617. The soul is in the heart. When the heart obeys or believes Pauline doctrine in our minds that we read the Bible, then our body can be an instrument of righteousness and do right. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. Rom. 617. 18. The believers are free from sin when we walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit, Rom. 8 colon 4, and can serve God. Our minds can be renewed by letting the word of Christ dwell in you richly. In all wisdom, Colossians 3 verse 16, we are to put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him, Colossians 3 verse 10, dot. 24 and that ye put on the new man which after god is created in righteousness and true holiness and put on the new man who we are in jesus christ which after god is created in righteousness and true holiness and after we learn our instructions we do them jesus already had the law in his heart then said i jesus christ lo i come in the volume of the book it is written of me i delight to do thy will O my god the father yeah Thy law is within my heart, PSA. 40 colon 7, 8. When Christ's Spirit lives in us, we can keep the law, 1 Tim. 1 colon 9. The Spirit will never lead us to break the law as we walk by faith, 2 Cor. 5 colon 7. We have the life of Jesus in us, 2 Cor. 4 colon 7, 10, 11, Colossians 1 verse 27. I am crucified with Christ, our sin nature, nevertheless I live, our soul, the realist still lives, yet not I, our spirit has been joined to his spirit, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, in this body on earth, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me, and gave himself for me, Gal. 2.20 It is his spirit, his mind, and his faith that runs us now. Not our weak spirit, our forgetful minds, or our frail faith. We have his true holy righteousness imputed to us, and we don't depend on our own imperfect righteousness. We don't try to be righteous, we already are. We are to live out of the new identity of who we are in Christ. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good, and acceptable, and perfect, will of God, Rom. 12 colon 2, don't walk in the flesh, walk in the spirit, Gal 5 16, 17. We have his spirit so we are to be led by the spirit of God, Rom. 8.17 When his word is in us rightly divided, then we have something of value in our minds. Paul told the Colossians something similar, that they must crucify the sinful flesh, put off sinful behavior, and put on the new man, Colossians 3 verses 5 to 14. In summary, Paul tells us to do three things for a successful Christian walk, put off the old man, 
for 22, renew our mind, read the Bible, for 23, and put on the new man, for 24. The goal is having full spiritual understanding of the mystery as a group. The power of God, Spirit, can and does heal our crooked thinking by renewing our mind with His word of truth rightly divided, and thus affecting our outward walk in Christ so we can walk worthy, behave as we should. We replace our old sinful behavior with the Spirit's right behavior. 25 Wherefore putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Wherefore for this reason, the unity of the body of Christ, and our walk as we work together to share the mystery. We are on the same team. Paul says, speak every man truth with his neighbor. The truth is the sound doctrine Christ gave to Paul. Every man, means every woman also, should be sharing the gospel of Christ so others can be saved and know the sound doctrine given to us and what God is doing now. Paul will now give practical examples of what grace looks like and what it does not look like. Putting away what we used to do and live like who we are in Christ. Stop lying, harboring anger, stealing, corrupt communication from the mouth, lies, false doctrine, bitterness, wrath, clamor, evil speaking, and all malice. We put them away permanently like some old clothes in the trash bin. We should also speak truth that edifies one another because we are members one of another. 26 Be ye angry, and sin not, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. We can be angry, we have emotions that help us identify what is going on around us. Just like pain helps us to know not to stub our toe, but our emotions should not have us. We are to control our emotions, they are not to control us. We are not to hold on to anger, but let it go, by dealing with it and forgiving the other person before we go to bed. 27 Neither give place to the devil. If we are in the flesh, the old man, we give place to the devil. We need to be in the spirit. The spirit is kind, forgiving and loving. Colossians 3 verses 12 to 14. We should put off anger. If we harbor unforgiveness and let it fester, we build a mountain out of a molehill and give the devil an opportunity to put a wedge between us and others, divide us. Obsessing over some wrong or hurt leads to bitterness and does us more harm than the person who wronged us. Also blaming others, instead of taking responsibility for the things we can do something about is harmful to ourselves. We don't solve problems by talking about them or hitting rock bottom. We solve problems by coming up with solutions. 28 Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Christ's grace doctrine makes us a giver, not a taker. Notice the word let in verses 28, 29, and 31, it is a grace word that means allow. As we earn an honest living we can bless others who need assistance until they can find a job. Every meeting of other souls is an opportunity to share Christ with others. Except it should not be done on company time. We need to represent Christ in a worthy manner. Decide not to be like you used to be. Christ is our life. Call 3 colon 3 dash 4. Let those who stole decide to stop stealing, get a good job and earn an honest wage so that we can give to someone who genuinely needs help. Grace motivation transforms a thief into a giver. Someone who is able to work but refuses to, should be allowed to starve. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. 2 Thess. 3.10.29 Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. We are not to let corrupt communication, false doctrine, lies, come out of our mouths, but only words that are useful which edify or build up others, especially in the faith. To speak sound doctrine to others for their eternal edification is to minister grace to the hearers. This is how to love others. Christ's wholesome words are gracious and health-giving to the hearers. 30 And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. We grieve the Holy Spirit of God by which we are sealed until the day of redemption, the rapture, if we do not put away what we did when we were lost and if we do not endeavor to keep the unity of the body of Christ in the bond of peace. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit by not getting along as members with one another in the body of Christ. We grieve the Holy Spirit and displease God when we do not allow the doctrine to work in us to live the grace life in unity. When we don't share the truth with others. When we make poor use of our time on earth. 
When we behave in a manner that is unbecoming for a saint of the Most High God, as members of the body of Christ, as his representative, as his ambassador, Individually, each believer has the Holy Spirit in them, Colossians 1 verse 27, and corporately the Holy Spirit is in the body of Christ and seals the body of Christ and its members. Therefore, whether we are pleasing to God or not, we are sealed and secure. Once saved, always saved. But our reward at the JSOC, 2 Cor, 5 10, will be small. 31 Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, put away all fleshly behavior permanently, that is not who we are anymore. Decide to stop being bitter, angry, shouting, and saying evil things. Let the old man stay crucified, let the old sin nature, the flesh, stay dead. 32 And be kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. How do we forgive someone who has wounded and hurt us deeply? We are to be kind and tender-hearted and forgive one another, just like God for Christ's sake has forgiven us, Colossians 3 verses 12 to 14. We can say, what you did was wrong, but Christ has forgiven me much more than wrong than that. Our forgiveness is not conditional like Israel's under the law, Luke 6 verse 37. There is nothing that a person has done that is so bad that God will not forgive them. We were all bad. Sin is sin. We were his enemies, but God was kind and tender-hearted and his son died our death for us. Let us be quick to forgive others so Satan doesn't get a toehold in between us. Paul began this chapter asking us to walk worthy in the next chapter he tells us to walk in love. When we are holding a King James Bible in our hands, we are holding the pure preserved word of God. When the church was in its infancy, Christ gave spiritual gifts to edify the body. Now we have his complete revelation in his word and his spirit in us, so we don't need the sign gifts. 1 Cor 13 8 13. The sign gifts such as tongues and healing were in effect during the Acts period to show that Christ had worked through Peter, but now he was working through Paul, so all need to join the body of Christ. 1 Cor 122 Rom 11 11. 12. The sign gifts ended in Acts 28 verse 28. Put off, corrupt speech, anger, steal disobedience, bitterness, anger and malice, dark no part in God's kingdom. Put on, truth, grace to the hearers, edifying forgiving, work and help those in need, obedient, kind, tender-hearted, singing, light, serve God, in kingdom, fools, wasting life, not subject to God, false doctrine, wise, redeeming the time, fear of God, spirit filled, submitting to each other, jipping, religion, God in the way of Cain, the righteous sacrifice by the will of God, accepted, able offering a lamb, the religious sacrifice by the will of man, rejected, Cain offering fruit of the ground, RM by faith, by faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. Hebrews 11 verse 4, KJV. By works, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, Satan, and slew, killed his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. 1 John 3 verse 12, KJV an example of a child of disobedience and Abel a child of obedience. Cain is an example of a child of disobedience and Abel a child of obedience.